Greetings. I see you have come to hear more of Beowulf. I shall read from J.R. Tolkien's translation for accuracy here of a poet in King Hrothgar's Hall, one who sings of the workings of the Lord. Starting at verse 70, it's talking of Grendel. Then the fierce spirit that abode in darkness grievously endured a time of torment. In that day after day he heard the din of revelry echoing in the hall. There was the sound of harp and the clear singing of the minstrel. There spake he that had knowledge to unfold from far off days the first beginning of men, telling how the Almighty wrought the earth, a veil of bright loveliness that the waters encircle. How triumphant he set the radiance of the sun and moon as a light for the dwellers in the lands, and adorned the regions of the world with boughs and with leaves. Life too he devised for every kind that moves and lives. Even thus did the men of that company live in mirth and happiness. And then Grendel strikes. We hear then about Grendel. So this is fascinating. It sort of mentions um, then one who had knowledge. It sounds like Hrothgar and his men, they don't really know much about Christianity. These are ancient, ancient people. They don't know much, um, especially because they revert to full-on paganism soon after. But there's one person there who does know of the Lord and his singing of the Lord uh, making creation. And everyone is rejoicing in this. It sounds like a vision of heaven on earth, the singing of the praises of the Lord. And everyone there together in this happy hall rejoicing. It sounds like a vision of heaven. So it does. And I love the way it's done in song as well. This is the singing because this is what we do in church, hymns and singing parts of the liturgy. This is what happened in the temple in Jerusalem. This is what the Psalms are all about. The Psalms are, are songs. Their Psalms means singing. And um, so this is beautiful to see. But, of course, Grendel doesn't like it. This demon does not like it. And it's a time of torment for him. And it seems that this is the big motivation for why he attacks. He wants to get rid of this heaven on earth. I suppose he's particularly annoyed to, as a demon to see and hear the beginnings of uh, the understanding of the Lord entering into these formerly pagan lands, lands of lands of King Hrothgar. So he wants to put an end to it, so he attacks. So you can think, well, well, you know, if the poet hadn't come and started singing and everyone would be happy, Grendel wouldn't have attacked. They'd have been fine. But when, they, when that stops and they go full pagan and are worshipping idols, that doesn't stop the attacks either. <laughs> So, whatever happens, there's going to be attacks. Wow, until Beowulf comes along. So, it's it's an interesting piece. It shows, you know, you can rejoice in the Lord, you can, you can start to grow in the faith. There's going to be an attack from the darkness. And how you respond to that is key. Do you give up? Well, you can give up but Grendel's going to keep attacking, or you stand up strong against it like Beowulf does through the power of the Lord. And that is what stops the attacks.
tying in with this concept of this battle raging between the light and the darkness, we hear of the creation talking in terms of a bit of battle imagery. It says here how triumphant he set the radiance of the sun and moon as a light. So what this poet is singing is saying how God's creation of the sun and moon is itself a victory, how it's a triumph. So the creation process is in itself a triumph over the forces of darkness and chaos, something that Grendel doesn't like to hear about. Now, I suppose that uh, the men of Hrothgar, they were a bit disappointed to hear about all this. It describes the earth as a veil of bright loveliness. Then next thing you know, Grendel's knock, knock, knocking at the door. But this song, it says that the fundamental reality of creation is goodness. The Lord saw that he had made, and it is good. And uh, Grendel is a corruption of that. So he's sort of an aberration. So he is. So, join me again for the next uh, look at what happens in Hrothgar's court. Farewell.